All right, so Java executes one statement after the other in the order that they are written. So it is like a sequential order that is followed in Java classes. Many Java statements are flow control statements, like if a particular condition happens, then you can execute it up, and if not, you can execute it up. So it is very much like if condition, if else, switch cases, and all. So let's take one by one. So here it is an if condition. So if I talk about an if condition, what it is, it is actually a conditional, like if I have a condition, and if it meets the condition, if the condition is met, I execute the first certain set of instructions, else if it is not met, I'll execute different set of instructions. So let me just take you an example for it. I say, what I'll do here is I'll create a verb. I again say age. I say age equal to 18. And if I say if, I say age equal to equal 18, it should output something. And I should use a sys out here. And I say the value is 18. And similarly, if it is not 18, what I should do is I say I, the value is invalid. I say the value is invalid. Sim simple if else. Right? When I do a simple if else, Let's run it up, and here it will say the value is 18. If I change this value to say 16, I should get the else component working here. And here it says the val value is invalid. Very much like a normal conditional that we people utilize in all the programming languages that we use. Right? So here I have told you about the if condition, then we also have a switch case condition. So in order to use the switch case condition, I, what I'll do is, I'll just do a switch case here. I type switch, and here I do a control space, and I do a switch case statement, and the value that I'll be placing this switch is the age variable here. So it is actually, it is like a multiple if-else conditions, depending upon the case. So if I say the case is 16, the case is 18, the case is 20, I'll be actually outputting some different values here. And then 16, what I'll be doing is, I'll be outputting the value is 16. And in 18, I'll be outputting the value is 18. And in 20, I'll be outputting the value is 20. As you all can see, what happens in the switch case is, it runs one after the other. So we have to place the break statements after every case so that it only goes into this, this case and it does not run over through, right? So here if I try to run as, since my val variable is holding the value 16, it says value is 16. If I change it up to say 18, it will hold up this value and it will also output this value. Normal switch case conditionals. Any, any person having any doubts here? And the default is the one wherein if it does not fall any of the criteria, it will place it into default. So here I'll say the value is invalid, right? And if I say I have placed switch cases for only three values, which is 16, 18, and 20. And if I set this value to something which we say zero, right? So it will go into the default case. Let's say the value is invalid. So this is how the default case works. Abhishek is asking me a question here, switch case can also work for strings also. Abhishek switch case uh, uh, prior to Java 1.7, JDK 1.7, actually switch cases only included the integer components. But uh, when I talk about Java what, JDK 1.7, then we also have support for string literals, Abhishek. All right? We can also support string in switch cases for the uh, after Java 1.7. Alright. So there we have various conditionals. We have the conditionals. We have already covered the conditionals like the FLs and the switch cases. Now we have the various iterations. I'm sorry about that. We have the various iterations. So in order to use the iterations, what I should do is normal looping conditions. So I'll just use show you a for syntax here. I have initialization in for syntax. I have the value checking. 
and then I have a decrement here, increment also. I'm sorry about that. We have an increment here, right? And what I'll do is this out the value of i plus i. So it, what it will do is it will output the value of i from zero to nine. You can see that. I'll just raise up this window for all of you to see, right? So this is how a normal for iteration works, wherein I have an initialization, then I have a variable checking, and then I have an increment all embedded into the same line. Another alternate to the for is the while loop. So in while loop, what I have is I have a condition. I execute some set of statements upon the condition being set to true, right? So I, here, let me just show you all. In order to use a while loop, what I'll do here is I'll say int i equal to zero, and I say while I say while i is less than five, I do a sys out. I say the value of i, right, along with i, and I say I increment the value here, right. So it will output the values from one to four. Let's run it up. Here you can see that it will be outputting the values from zero to four, right. So this is how a while loop works. Now I have a question for all of you here. What is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? What exactly is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? I need a response from everyone here. What is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? Can you just write that onto the chat window? I need responses from every single attendee here. What is the difference between a while and a do while loop? I'll, I'll just uh, tell you about this Prashant. Don't worry about that. As you people might have used in other programming languages like C, C++, what is the difference between a while and a do while loop? I have got a response from Pikesh here. I've got all the responses. Can you all quickly come up with responses? Because I need this session to be as interactive as possible. Prabhavati has got the very got it very right here. I think I'm actually impressed by this answer here. All right, so I'll tell you the difference here. Everybody has gone it. A few of the attendees have just gone it very much right, and they have got it very right. So here, what happens is, in a while condition, what I'm doing is, I'll just with syntax, I'll be telling you the difference here. All right. So here, in the while condition, what I'm doing is, I'm checking the condition. If the condition matches, I do a sys out, and then I do an increment. In case of a do while. Right. In case of do while, what I do here is I check for the condition, all right? And I say the condition should be i is greater than zero. Since i is value, i's value at present is five, all right? I'll just remove this up. I say, all right. I'll just remove this up, and I say do something. And here, while the condition is true. I say i is greater than five, since the value of i is at present zero, right? So what I'll do here is I'll I just do it is zero at present. So I say i is greater than zero, right? So it should do something while i is greater than zero, but because this is not the condition though, i is value is, is zero at present, all right? But if I try to check this up, it will always fall. Or it will always be false. This condition will never be true, all right? So if I sys out, the difference is is that do while 
will execute at least once. So that is the actual difference between a while and a do while loop. Even if the condition does not fit in, the do while loop will execute at least once. So that is how it works up. So that is the basic difference between a while and a do while loop. I hope everybody understands this now.